There was only beingness. It was empty of forms, but it was aliveness. It was not known by itself. It was formless. But it was um, a living entity. It is living being. But there is no opposite in this emptiness. So it split itself. We can call this emptiness God because there is nothing in it that is not uh, love and the contrary of love. So it is not known to itself. A little baby is, is love, but it doesn't know it. It has to go in life through all experiences that will bring it back to love, to love itself and to love what is around it. And that goes by the duality or of love and, and, and pain. Well, the God being that was love from the beginning, that is love, split itself, himself, to know what it is and what love is. He split himself to love himself. That means there are two God beings, the same. Because they are the same, they still don't know what love is. The silent unmoving God being and the part that split itself is also love. Well, to love, to know that love, to experience that, this love has to uh, experience the opposite. To be able through that opposite form to grow to its own love that it is. So you might hate people who do stupid things and are and bad people, but that is the God in, in that form that does not know it is love. So it is on its way to love. The people who are bad are on their way to find love because they know they miss something. That's the God inside, and the God inside allows that form of himself to grow to love. So only love exists, only there is the ignorance, the oblivion of the people who drifted far away. But it is all the same moving form of God. God is the silent love. And then he split himself in moving parts of himself and they drift through the cosmos in a certain way to come back to this love. And then it is known and that is such a well-being and it is not even real. It is the dream of God. God didn't split himself. How can he? What is it in God that can split himself? There is nothing but God, but love, or beingness, or self, or the beloved. For me, the word God is most clear. God is this entity, this, this beingness. It is full of bliss and goodness. And it went out in its own form into creation to discover this goodness. <laughs> and we are, we are all, we are that. If someone is bad and uh, not behaving well, and you have spoken and they are still that way, they haven't finished the road. So leave them on their road. If you meet people who are listening and who are love, loved and nice, then you have found someone on the same piece of the road that you are. 
and you can find people there that are much more developed in this road love and that you feel immediately this warmth and you recognize the love that is God recognizing his love. You recognize your love in all moving forms. That's why there is creation. That's why there is this um, manifestation. That's why there is this dream. God dreams love and he becomes love in that dream. Okay, you are good, you are loved, and you are loved. Because only consciousness exists, that means the things that we see, the, the forms and the matter, are just visible consciousness and all matter perishes it means it is formed by consciousness and it will perish it's it is not even matter <laughs> does it matter yes because we think it is real and we work with it and it takes our attention and we like it and we want it and we don't want that but it is consciousness if you want something that means that you want something consciousness in your consciousness and you want it in your hands to hold it it's <laughs> so fun the more you understand the more funny and even ridiculous it is to, to want to have things and what is worse that we steal and jealousy comes up and we murder for it we even want other people's countries to to get to our own but they, we cannot divide cur the, the countries and the, the earth can you divide air but this is my air and that is your air and the, in that air they speak uh, Russian and in this air they speak uh, African and in that air but it is all the same air it's just our mind that divides it what is not to be divided it is just consciousness one total conscious being beingness that's what we are so that means we divide and we cut and we make parts of ourselves. Well, so stupid if you don't understand what you are. But you will learn because that which doesn't even exist will teach you that you don't exist. <laughs> Funny, eh? It's all the play of God playing with himself. My goodness, what good it is to understand and be free of it. Although it still appears, inside is the knowing, what it means to see it. So you leave it, let it be and stay in your peace. <coughs> and the infinite consciousness is the only reality. It's awareness, aware of no content. It is infinite. <laughs> and out of this infinite appears a world. So this world acquires reality that is of itself infinite consciousness it is endless awareness of no thing and all that appears out of it is no thing it has no substance but we give it reality 
our consciousness is not empty, it is filled with those appearances and we give those appearances reality. They, um, they lend their reality of the emptiness. So in fact it is emptiness that you see and it plays forms. So you and me and everybody is in fact emptiness that lends itself, its form, it acquires its reality from this emptiness. <laughs> What you see is um, something that has no substance. <sighs> <laughs> it, it doesn't exist. It is just consciousness with forms floating in it. A design, a, a, a form, a <sighs> and we give it so much value and reality that it became real for us and we forgot the source from which, where it came. It came out of emptiness and we filled the emptiness with our consciousness. That's why we still appear all the time. If you know you are empty, there's emptiness, you cannot appear, you cannot be visible. And when you are not visible, you cannot sense and uh, experience and being caught in the duality of this appearing world which is empty by itself. <laughs> See the game? <sighs> mm. It doesn't matter, it's just emptiness in this form visible. See that. If you remain silent, then you are not in the moving, vibrating sector. And that's what you long for when you are in the vibrating sector the being someone, you long for peace and silence, and still you go on moving. <laughs> That's a force so strong inside. That's the ego. Ego is the vibrating part of the silence. And the vibrating part is not reality because It is not a part of silence. Silence cannot vibrate. Then it is not silence. But we all seem to go in the movement, the actions, the vibrating uh, side of the um, creation. And once we are there, we believe it so strongly that we want to be there, we want to stay. We are curious. What's going to happen tomorrow? Or what's over there? I want to know. No, I want to be in the silence. I am not moving. I am silent. I will not speak. I will not think. I just be the self, the silent, eternal self. So that's what you want. <sighs> not one second later, <laughs> vibration starts. Because it's not up to you. You cannot decide to act or not, because you are moved about. The silence is the only uh, eternal reality, the not moving silence. And that's what you long for. It started to dream it moved, and the moving part wants to be back home in the silence. That's all inside you. 
the object of the dream. You are the object of the silence of yourself. <laughs> object cannot do anything. <laughs> the pot on the table cannot move, although it wants to be back in the box with the other pots. <laughs> no, it cannot move, only when you put it in the box. So you are object, you are depending on the silence inside whether, whenever it is time to stay in silence. But then you have to go. Because you are so used to be in this state, you don't want to go. Yeah, you want to go, but you want to stay. So that's the, the duality of the dream. The dreamer dreams this all. And in the dreamer, there is something moving. It is not the dreamer itself. It cannot move. The dreamer cannot do anything. But something inside is moving and it finds out that it will not find itself in the moving part of itself, which is not reality, because silence cannot move. The moving part is not real, so you are not real. Inside is the silence, eternal being. And whatever happens in the moving part, no one can stop it. Because it's a dream. Dream cannot stop itself. It cannot want anything. It cannot act. It cannot. It can just be dream. And it doesn't even know it's a dream. <laughs> That's what's the trouble. We think we are real and we are doing things. That's our problem. But it's not your problem. It's a problem of the dream. So leave it. Be silent. That's the only thing that is you, your reality, the silence. And the silence can enjoy whatever dream pops up. It doesn't change the silence. That's you. It is um, difficult to remember all day that it is only dream where you in where you uh, disappear in every morning. <laughs> every morning when you wake up, first thing is dream. Bum, you go in it. But you, uh, don't, but you don't know it because you feel um, that you slept well or you want to drink something or it's late. There's always something that takes the attention. And then you immediately forget that you are in a dream or you didn't even think of it. But in the deep sleep, you were out of that dream. It was the waking state. And you cannot remember it because the mind and the thoughts were not with you. It was only you, the pure you, in the deep sleep. <laughs> That's why we need sleep, because if we don't rest, we get crazy. And the dream state, from the deep dreamless state to the daydream, there is this dream state when you can say, oh, I saw something strange this night, I dreamt that I was uh, flying, or that is the state between the reality of the day and the reality of the not existing as person. In that state, Everything can happen. And then you wake up, you say, oh, I had such a strange dream. But the dream that you are in at the morning, is, <laughs> it is exactly straight, uh, strange as the, the, the night dream. Because this is strange what happens in this world. <laughs> it is idiot what can happen. It, it is dream. Can you imagine people going uh, outside and... and shooting others like that just for no reason well it is strange it is an idiot dream and some people have done are so tight in it that they've lost all 
a, f a vision of reality of, of the life of others and of themselves, they, well, they lost it and they killed others. It's a, it is strange. It is as strange as in the night dream. And only reality that exists is the deep sleep, but you don't recognize it. A person can never recognize that with, with, which it doesn't know. But that what knows can recognize itself in this um, strange dream state. It recognizes what it is because it knows I cannot be that strange appearance over there in that dream. I cannot be that one who harms others or it even it knows there are no others. But the reality that you are is, is only oneness, but it is formless. And in the day you lose that no knowledge and you are in the ignorant state of the dream form and you think this is real and you you have to act and to do and you see uh, people around and they do all kinds of things and you see your own children but all of that is part of the dream you are in the dream, but your children also are in the dream. You are not real and your children are not real. It is all the dream form of that oneness which is formless. And in the dream form, it can do what, what uh, it wants to play. And you think you are real and you see your children and you see other people over there and you want to protect your children because they you think they are yours. <laughs> it is it is dream. But that's how it is. You prefer your own children above other children around because you say these are mine. <laughs> of course in the dream it is like that. You took care of them and you are concerned but there is only one, one, one isness in all those forms. There is no better or worse or uh, prefer or uh, push away. But that is the dream state where we are in. This one beingness, this formless, is placed that it is you and it plays that it is your children. But they are not your children. They are just all appearances in this one formless beingness and that's it, it has no form and that's what you are and that's what your children also are all your children children the form uh, in the in them is the formlessness and in the neighbor is the formlessness and in the one who kills the other is the formlessness it is all the formlessness that goes into imagination in the dream and in the dream everything can happen and we forget immediately that we are not really existing when we wake up in the morning and we start to make breakfast and uh, make oh i today i will do this or well that's not your doing it is the <laughs> formless energy that makes you stand up and think Oh, I will make breakfast. I will uh, call my children for going somewhere. That is the formlessness that acts in the dream of itself. And you, nothing to do with it. Only you think so. And with this thinking, there is also the, the feeling of uh, being... Uh, yeah, what you call it, responsible and, and worried. But it is only there for you, for the inner being that you are, to understand I am not all that forms. I am that which sees it, the witness. I am, I am the formlessness, 
yippee, now I know what I am. I am not all that. So that's inside you. That reality. That's what you are. See everywhere the formlessness of your own self in that form. And in that form. And in that form. But it is the formlessness that is you. Not the form. You can see everybody and you know that's not me. And you look in the mirror and you say that's me. No. It's the formlessness that is in everyone the same inner self. There's only one inner self. In billions of forms. Acting and moving and dancing. But it is the dream of that inner one self. <laughs> to know I am not that moving dream. I am the stillness, the silence. And the silence is in every being that you see. It's your silence. It's your beingness. In you and in them. <laughs> yeah, that is the formlessness. The only reality. That's the bliss where we long for. Feel it inside. Feel it and feel that you are not this moving world, but this inner peace. <laughs> happy, happy. See that and you will be free of that which appears. Still you are going on, but inside there is this knowing that all is empty. Ah, yo. So freeing, free feeling. It's not real, it's not true. It's not real, it's not true. Whatever you think of it, experience and feel the sensations, the emotions. It's just waves in the field of emptiness. <laughs> it will be floating away, it will drift to its own empty source, you, you will drift to your own empty source, mm. in the meantime, see the things and the play, see the play, play is to enjoy what is played, not to cry about it. It's just the way you see it. The painful things are not real. And the nice things are not real. It is just what is filling up your consciousness. But your consciousness is not real when it's filled up. And it is emptiness. It is empty by itself. It was empty from the beginning, and it is empty now. All things are floating by, let it be. The sky is aware of the clouds that it forms itself, and the clouds dissolve in the sky. The ocean sees the waves from itself coming up and descending in itself. And we see our consciousness being filled up with forms and being empty again. That's our true state, emptiness. Happiness is emptiness. <laughs> there exists two things. <laughs> Nothing and something. <laughs> you can do whatever you like. Talk about nothing, talk about something, but it doesn't change a bit in what is. Nothing is nothing, and something is something. Whatever form it takes, or whatever happenings are in that moving part. It's both inside ourself. The silence is nothing. 
And out of that nothing appears a mind, a something. And in that mind, everything is happening and f passing by. And uh, <laughs> you can talk about the whole cosmos, the whole universe, and all the things taking place on Earth. But it all is contracted in one something. So still it is just something, a thing, it's something, well, well, there's another something, sort of thing, and that's something, but what we do is dive deep in this some things, and we are lost because there are so man many some things, they are all overwhelming and true, then you lose your nothing. But still, all the time, there is nothing. And out of this nothing, which does not move, comes the movement of the mind, the consciousness, the awareness. It goes into some things. And bye-bye, you are lost for ages. <laughs> but because the ages also come out of nothing, they are not really there. What comes out of nothing, how can that be other than nothing? <laughs> you experience the things that your mind is magically making up. It's magic. Something that is not there, how can it appear? But it is. Only in our mind, in the thoughts, in the imagination. Whatever pain you feel, whatever uh, things are passing and people around you with the happenings, they are lost in their happenings, but it is all under one name, something. Still there exists only two things, for us, nothing and something. Yeah, and we are lost in the some things. And we see so many around us that confirm all the time that some things, that things that seem to be there and that seem to hurt us and we are bothered by it. And if we are not bothered, there comes some to your door and they are bothered and complain and it's you want to help but it's all in one great uh, bag of some things like the groceries from the supermarket all different things in one great bag <laughs> and you are the one carrying it around and you have to uh, to, to work it away also, to digest it. That's some things from the supermarket and that's all in your mind, all the some things in your mind. You have it and you have to digest it. But as Ramana Maharshi said, is if you have a bin full of dirt, do you take out every piece of dirt one by one or do you throw the bin over so that it is empty at once <laughs> well, that's difficult because we are so attached to our some things we love the some things because that they make us exist as a separated person who is very important and wow but it is not really there it's just the, the the nothing that is, is the silence that shows itself these images your silence shows you your own uh, appearance the silence shows the images to you to itself and then the silence says oh oh that's not me i don't look anymore but when you think you are that one in the images, you look all the time and you love it. <laughs> Even if it's painful, you want to stay. What a silly game it is. <clears throat> well, 
it's as it is and slowly slowly because we cannot throw the bin over in one uh, and empty it in one time because we were so long in the bin in the some things that we have to do it one by one but it will be f faster and faster when it's getting more empty and then you can lift it up and throw it uh, overboard when there's not so much left and if you cannot do it just surrender to your own nothing your silence surrender your movements to your silence in other words surrender and bow yourself to the loving God <laughs> and let the play go on it will end by itself it started by itself and it will end by itself <laughs> two things nothing and something but the something is not real it is to show you it is nothing in fact if you look well you see it is nothing <laughs> wow what a story about nothing something says story about nothing what do you believe that's where you are well at this moment still we are here so we are both but we see it from the silent size side and not from the busy side that's good and the funny part is that there exists in the both sides a longing it's yeah strange that the silence which is nothing that it can long for something but here starts the illusion silence longs for movements and movements when you are caught in movements you long for silence <laughs> so poor you you are always longing for something or for whatever it is the silence of your source or the movements that come out of your source and in that movements you have had enough so you want to be silent again <laughs> that's the um, circle of life wanting to be and not and then wanting not to be <laughs> you cannot stop it <laughs> best thing is to laugh about it because it's a funny joke it's not real and still the longing is there the silence doesn't know it is silence when it doesn't move so it longs for movements not to know the, the movements but to, but to know its own silence see silence is is nothing and it longs to know that so it starts to be something and when you as form came out of that nothing into a something you started to long back for the silence for the not being who invented this idiot game who was it well it was your own self <laughs> shoot yourself no you cannot can you no you can do nothing not when you want something and then when you don't want it anymore both is coming out of that what you are but be be easy it's not true it's just a play it's just imagination and you are in the imagination knowing that there is silence and when you you are in that silence you know that is there this imagination will it ever stop when the silence is fulfilled yeah i think then it will stop the longing for me i had so much movement <laughs> i want to stop <clears throat> inside me it is uh, something that says enough is enough but really 
Suppose there was this knowing that says to you, tomorrow at uh, noon you will disappear, you will leave your form. Huh? What will go through your mind, through your consciousness? Would you gather the family and kiss them goodbye? Or would you drink all the wine that you had in the house and start smoking a cigarette? That's for the body. And the other was for the, <coughs> the feeling of the mind, uh, the saying goodbye to the, the children, hoping they will be uh, good. Or would you just sit and breathe in and out and say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for taking me back. What would you do? I know Sai Baba with all those devotees, those students at the schools, one day stood before the, the students and he said, um, who wants to be liberated does one step forward. No one moved. It was so sudden that he said this, that they were not prepared and they were not ready. And when I heard about Sai Baba, I dreamt a lot of this great free energy. And I dreamt that there was, I was in the mountains and there was a deep abyss. And he said to me, jump. You know what I did? I walked backwards to get speed and I really jumped it was of course only imagination but in that imagination for me the experience was real like in a dream you experience real things so I jumped and what happened when I went down I was a piece of the mountain gliding and I landed on that piece and I jumped again and another piece of the mountain and all the way to the uh, o o other side, it was filled with levels of the mountain itself that filled up the abyss. So I had I jumped, but I never fell. I never hurt myself, never lost myself. I just went on the trust of to the trust of God, offering myself. I I got to the other side. I remember that now. Funny. It's the, the the part of the movements, the some things and the nothings, no no thing and some things. That's the play. But there's always this longing until you have reached that side which you really are, the other side of yourself. There it stops. You are home. No more longings for movements and no more longings to come back to the silence because it is fulfilled. It's all in your mind, in your consciousness, all in the experiences and the awareness of that which moves and that which stops moving. <laughs> it's just a game, but you can enjoy it. You know you will arrive safely because you find you actually you are already in that safe place. Just know it. <laughs> it's just so stupid. You want to disappear, <laughs> but you can only be knowing that you are there when you appeared. See? When you are there, you exist and then you can say, I don't want to be, I want to appear, disappear. But you first have to be there. When you are not there in the deep sleep, there's nothing that says, I don't want to be. It is, it is 
this the good state and then you appear in a form in the day and you can never say before you appear in the day I don't want to go in the day because you are not there yet <laughs> and when you are there you cannot help it to not be there so it's just see the 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 fun of it and the the ridiculousness and the the in the humor humor of, of laughing and see the game you can only say i don't want to play when you are there to play before you played there was no one that says i don't want to play <laughs> you see you were not there before you appeared uh, suppose you wake up at eight in the morning Bam, eight o'clock there you are you exist but a couple of minutes before eight you did not exist there was no person in that uh, formed being that that was there in the bed there was no one in it might as well be uh, put in in a <laughs> coffin but when you once you have been appearing out of that nothingness that moment you cannot grasp it and say no i don't want to go there you can do that when you see um, a dirty gate with with iron um, things on it and you have to go in and you know it's dark and there and dangerous then you can say because you exist before the gate as well as after that you exist you say no i don't want to go in there but it's not the same when you come out of the deep sleep into the day the deep sleep state there is no one then there's the dream state there's not your it was not yours you cannot control just flashes of images and then all of a sudden you lie, you lay in your body in your bed then, then you can exist and say, I don't want it, but not before you came. Like the baby cannot say, I don't want to be born, only when it is there, and then it starts crying, wah, wah, I don't want to be here. <laughs> but you have to finish the road. You have to go on. The one thing that helps is see everything as a dream. That's liberating. See it as the dream continues in the day. This is just as much dream as when you are asleep. And both come out of the deep sleep state, out of the nothingness. Not a thing. And then, oops, oops, there is that thing again. Me. <laughs> well, do the best with it as you can. It's not real, but as you feel it real, it is also real. But it will pass. Nothingness will never pass because it's not something. And something will go by. And that's you. You also are that nothingness that will remain silent. Yippee! So you can enjoy the movements. Why not? Good. No matter how strongly you know, this all is dream, it's not existing, it's not reality. You will not go out naked on the street. <laughs> That's the fact that you are not really convinced. There is still this body and this mind and its feeling and its sensations, it's happening and there's happiness and there may be a little shame or anxiety or nervousness or whatever appears, it still continues. It's just what human forms have. And I don't see myself jump out the door naked. No, no, I wouldn't. No, one for myself. But um, 
I know Ramana Maharshi. You might say he was naked. He only had one little. So he didn't really care, not because he was so liberated of all. But still, as even as an Indian, sometimes you see the, the saints sitting naked on a rock or so, but they they put ashes on their body and, and that's another that's not really liberated I think it's just a matter of look at me I don't care but then there is still a bit of ego that wants to impress others I, I suppose I don't think Sai Baba will go naked um, he was the, the most liberated being is the most liberated you feel his radiation and you faint it's never had such a high some some high feelings of, of bliss and whoa, burning away but he would never go do something strange because he adapts to the people around that's his love and i would never go uh, silly things no not for myself, but not for them also, neither. <laughs> so I just thought of this. When you are really liberated, you go, could do it. But I, I wouldn't. <laughs> Wait.